Now, Dario does something entirely different than Hitchcock did, only because uh, Dario deals with that, uh, that kind of genre often, of uh, the crime suspense, uh, mystery, uh, guy in the black gloves, murder genre. People associate that with, uh, with Hitchcock, but he isn't really at all. He's, uh, he's actually far away from that kind of cold and precise look at, at things that Hitchcock was, was always doing. He's, a, he's a, a very far away from that aloof kind of feeling you get with a Hitchcock movie. Dario was very, very different indeed. Much closer to the surrealists, Louis Bunuel, let's say, than Hitchcock. Sarei molto contento di, di fare una carriera come Hitchcock l'ha fatta. Però I would love to have a similar career to Hitchcock, but I'm different from him. I'm Latin, and so my films are more passionate. And 30 years on, the world is a very different place from when I started to make films. Dario Argento has written and produced films for other directors too. He helped George Romero, the groundbreaking creator of Night of the Living Dead, to finance and produce his sequel, Dawn of the Dead. I met him in New York, and then he came to Italy. I met him in New York, and then he came to Italy, and he stayed in a beautiful house near the Colosseum. He wrote the film, and then I stayed with him while he did some shooting. It was a beautiful relationship, and it was the beginning of our collaboration. I wound up sitting in Rome for a month and writing the final script, the shooting script there, which is an experience, you know, because it was all just pasta and caprese salads and going out with Dario at night and big tables, 20 people, all multilingual people, and I'm sitting there like this guy from Pittsburgh with this idea about people, dead people that walk. The commercial success of Dawn of the Dead brought Argento and Romero together again. Their next project involved two stories from Edgar Allan Poe, Dario and George would co-direct. I hadn't heard from Dario for a number of years, and all of a sudden he called me said, George, I am Dario. And, uh, wow, so we had a great chat, and he said he wanted to do a thing with Poe stories. He would do one, and, and I would do one. What's his plan? And they would be an hour each, or 40, 50 minutes each. And we just had a ball, like a bunch of kids playing with electric trains, you know. I think it's a fun little film. I think that's where he met Tom Savini for the first time, or, or worked with him for the first time. Dario Argento? Dario is a star in his own right. God, Suspiria, Tenebrae, you know. He's a volcano of the mind. We would sit there and, you know, create this stuff, you know, just thousands of ideas, and he was like, picking the best one. and. Uh, you know, he doesn't speak very much English, but we could talk for hours with sign language and, you know, charade gestures and things like that. He's, he's, he's just fun. Tom Savini has always been fascinated by the mechanics of death. His time in the army taught him valuable lessons for his later career. The jaw is always slack, maybe one eye is slightly open and closed. Sometimes they die with smiles on their faces, you know. So, and that's what I did in Dario's uh, movie Trauma. It's always my ideal to, to put the real head in as much as, po as possible, like when you're doing a cutthroat, you know. Ah! Because the real head can act. The Brad Dorf head was the best. There's a scene in there where the head falls from the elevator shaft and lands on a spike. It just kind of slides down there after it lands. Well, Dario did that in reverse. We actually pulled the head up on the pole a bit and then took it right off the pole. So in reverse, it would go chink, and then slide, and that was Dario's idea. Argento and Savini dreamt up many bizarre methods of inflicting death. 
Well, the new somatic was also from trauma. Imagine in Dario's broken English describing how this machine that you would put on somebody's head would be a garrot that would tighten and take off their head. He left it up to us and we just got an you know, electric screwdriver and, and got sockets, electric sockets, and made something very with, with, with a bunch of battery connections on it so it would have the power and the garrot wire, you know, and it really worked. You'd squeeze it and it would, you know, come in. Fresh. In Trauma, a thriller which Argento also fun. directed in the States, it was actress Piper Laurie's turn to receive the Savini treatment. You know, the most difficult part of that is what I had to do before I even left Los Angeles and go to one of those special effects places where they put a plaster over you. And I'd done it once a few years before and thought I was going to die because of claustrophobia. They do stick straws in your nose, but still it was very difficult for me. The actual shooting of the beheading and all the frolicking afterwards uh, was fascinating. I'd never done anything like that. <laughs> Dario wanted her head to roll across the floor and say, Nicholas, every time its mouth rolled toward the camera. I was seated on a revolving stool and the and somebody would spin me around on it, and I'd go whirling around so that they'd get a shot of the head spinning. Of course, it was, it was very close, so you couldn't see that, uh, what was really going on. We took the floor and put it behind her on uh, wheels. So they would wheel the floor behind her as she spun on the chair, and they turned the camera upside down, featuring just below the, the appliance on the neck, and she would go, Nicholas. I mean, it's not often that you get beheaded and then get lines to say afterwards. <laughs> Argento's imagination and technical ingenuity are not just confined to killing his characters off. The shot that blew me away was the shot in opera, which tracks the bird around the opera house. And I still don't know how they did it. He tried to explain to me, but I didn't quite understand. I guess some sort of a crane from the ceiling or something, but what an amazing shot that was. I've never seen a shot like that. Crows were one thing, but 1987's Creepers required special effects with insects too. Dario wanted something which looked real because uh, he, he did not like uh, special visual effects. He wanted everything to look strictly real. I shot the close-ups of the inset against the windows, but I said there is something missing. There is a long shot missing, a long shot of millions of flies coming to the house. So we got a tank with water, we had the coffee, we put the coffee into the tank and filmed it with the slow motion camera. It came out, it was very good. When Davio saw it on the screen, he was surprised, he kissed me, you know. <laughs> he said, that's wonderful. Despite the variety of his work, Argento always returns to the mechanics of death. He's trying to get somebody killed, somebody stop this thing. Harvey Keitel in a fantasy dream sequence in this medieval flashback is impaled and the stake comes out of his mouth. And it wasn't just audiences who were traumatized by Dario's love of graphic special effects. We got a letter from Harvey Keitel's attorney. Harvey Keitel must never be in the same room with the fake head of Harvey Keitel. He must never see a photograph of the fake head. Uh, the head must never be shown to him. He must never be anywhere near the fake head. And I asked him, what was this thing with the fake head? And he said, oh, it would just give me the creeps. You know, he didn't want to see it. He didn't want to be around this fake head of him. You know, Harvey Keitel. <laughs> 